Hello, everyone, and welcome to another special episode of Anime on Draft Shorts with the R in parentheses and stuff. <laughs> uh, today, I am uh, going to be your host, Alec, and I'm here joined today, this evening, with my co-host, Rolando. Hi. Hello. Hello. Uh, thank you for joining me today, sir. I, uh, Hello. I'm very glad to have you on the show with me, not that you're always on the show with me but anyways so today we're talking about ancient majesty's bride or however you say it um and we're doing it on a special even though it's awesome because drew refuses to watch it because he's a little piece of crap (laughs) um wow but (laughs) he he needs to watch it it's a good show at least i think so yeah um but today our plan was to focus on not what recently happened in the uh, most recent episodes, but what happened in the past few episodes, the last arc, as you called it, the, with the cats and the, uh, and the, the blob. And we first have two new characters introduced. And um, I just kind of want to get your opinions straight out of the the get go. What did you think about like that arc as a whole? Rolando? Uh, I liked it. It was, um, it's like a good introduction to what looks like the main kind of villain of the story. Um, that sorcerer kid guy or looks like a kid. He's clearly not a kid. Um, right. <laughs> but what I, a lot of what I got out of it was so yeah, they, they use the cat's nine lives as kind of like a, like a talking point for, um to kind of like set up the story and like obviously there's like the whole thing with the the two people that are kind of involved with that sorcerer and kind of like tricking the husband guy who's trying to save his frail wife um Mm -hmm. that's kind of like uh, i guess like a thematic parallel to what both um chise and um elias lack which is kind of love, I guess, you know, like the human emotion of love, I guess you could say, because both of them lack it and they're kind of hatchlings in terms of experiencing love, like even between themselves. Because she's broken and he's not human. <laughs> yeah, essentially. Yeah. And um, I thought it was a good way to kind of put that there and also kind of be like, use that as mm-hmm. like a explanation for like the main villain and like the difference between like sorcery and, Mm -hmm. and mad, I mean like, like a sorcerer and a magician you could say. Mm -hmm. So it was, yeah. So I actually was a little confused when these first episodes started because in the manga, they actually call the sorcerers alchemists. And so they kept saying sorcerers, sorcerers. And I'm like, what the fuck is a sorcerer? I'm like, are they referring to the alchemist? And so, like, I caught on, obviously, relatively quickly because oh. it's the only thing that it could be. But they keep calling them alchemists in the manga, that, which to me personally makes a little more that sense makes more than sense sorcerer. If they call him an alchemist, because, like, the way that sorcerer kid is, like, going around, mm-hmm. like, he, mm-hmm. it seems like he's more studying alchemy than it is just sorcery i mean like the way they explained it was like sorcery was like they're just using magic like or whatever whereas the magician or the mages like get the help of other things to you do magic Mm -hmm. right right yeah so the mages like they they get help from spirits and things like that along with the magic they have and they basically channel the magic of the spirits and stuff to change the laws of whatever they're trying to do. Alchemists, basically, it's kind of like they steal the magic almost. And then they, in the in the manga, I think they describe them as kind of like programmers where they're like rewriting the code and then mages bend the code. Right. <laughs> and so um, they call them alchemists in the manga. And so if Sorcerer kind of sounded weird, I suggest thinking of them as an alchemist because it makes the story make more sense. To it me, does at make least. more sense um, that way. Other than that, I think they do a really good job of like keeping to the manga. Um, 
But I actually really liked this arc as well, the cat one, just because, like you said, it was a good introduction to, like, the the evil sorcerer kiddo. Um, and then it's also... Hang on, excuse me. Had to burp. Um, it's also kind of... Um, a good introduction into like she says like kind of sort of evolution, you know, cause she's the, of her as a character. She obviously doesn't just want to destroy it. Even though she's had like a rough lot in life, she still wants to like help the people move on. Um, even at the cost of like, you know, her own health or whatever, yeah. as we find out, she, you know, collapses at the end and ends up in the forest with the fairy queen. But that's next Next episode. She surprisingly um, has a lot of empathy for someone that suffered so much. Yeah. And that clearly suffers from depression and other <laughs> seemingly problems. mental illness. Um, but she's just yeah, se- exactly. a sleigh beggy. Mm hmm. The other thing I do have to say about this episode was it was really dark. Like the well, these episodes, especially the one where he's like cutting up the cats that whole episode, like half of it was just really dark and they did a really good job of kind of portraying like his fall into the darkness or, you know, into madness or whatever. The manga did a good job like of it feeling dark, but the, the anime did a really, really good job. They like took it up a notch from how I, when I read it and it just felt, you know, like really brooding and all that sort of stuff. So I thought they did a really good job just with like the the way they drew things and the The um, music, the music that they used and like different audio, just the um, whatever, what you call them for where it's like, you know, cues to specific things. I thought they did were spot on in these episodes here. Um, I noticed that. um, So it's like, you know, the scene leading up to where Mina finds Matthew, like killing the cats. mm -hmm. They, they employed a lot of horror techniques um, like classic horror techniques. And so, mm-hmm. um, like, you know, they, they use a lot of like weird, um, kind of fisheye angles to portray like, like something is weird. And then, oh, uh-huh. you know, like they would, you know, eliminate all of the background sound so that it was just silence and it makes you feel aw- like uncomfortable. And then, like, the, just, right. like, you just hear, like, the strings come in, like, the typical horror strings, like, mm-hmm. and then, like, I thought they did a, like, a, a nice little nod to, like, the old, old school, like, Hitchcock horror in that. Uh-huh. Yeah, and it, it really, like, set the mood really well. hmm Because it was, that scene, especially when she finds him in the shed, was, like, pretty creepy. Yeah. They did a really good job of... Just make it like they just and the what they did with like the shadows rather than just showing cats. They showed like the silhouettes. Mm-hmm. I think it was drawn that way in the manga. So shout out to the the, you know, the author and the the original um, what it, illustrator or whatever, because they did if that's you know, they did a good job and have a good base for this. But then shout out to the anime people as well, because they're really kind of adding a lot to it. But um, this whole arc was uh, enjoyable, I think. Um I'm trying to remember if there's what else happened. We oh we kind of got we learned about the cats and how in this cats aren't cats they're spirits or whatever and they live nine actual lives. nine lives and as they die more they get wiser and become like civilizations of cats <laughs> around <laughs> the world um, and it's just kind of like different. What else happened in this in these episodes? They met the is there the mm-hmm. was it Renford or Rayford something? Oh, Renfred and Renfred and, and Alice. the blonde girl, whoever Alice. That's what it was. I could not remember her name. Yeah, so we met them, who are like being manipulated by the kid or something. Yeah, that creepy um, little kid. Yeah, that little freak who made the wife blow up. Because his experiment screwed up. <laughs> that was just so like demented. Like that happening. Yeah, that I was, was just like, like the whole lead up to it. Because it was all like really horror. And then she exploded mm-hmm. into puddle. And just like what? Yeah the she f- just like melts. Like I think I yeah. out loud said what the fuck. Yeah. 
That was a pretty shocking moment. Like, I think it's definitely more shocking. I knew it was ha- going to come because I've read the manga and I was like, oh, it's going to happen. But they still did, good, did a good job where I was like, oh, this is kind of gross. You know, like it was just like and then what they were doing with the the husband, like, you know, picking up the goop and all that. And yeah, he was, was like in like, denial and shit. Yeah, it was really messed up. But like, yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be because he got screwed, you know, by by the guy and you know became like the cat said became a monster not a human anymore and then that's why he's that blob but he kind of moves on so but um all in all i think they just do a really good job in this show i'm actually pleasantly surprised at like how like well they do all these things you Mm -hmm. know like just the scenery and the music really pair well together um, I think it's probably my favorite anime of the season right now. <laughs> For me, at least. Um, I'm still unsure what my favorite is. But this is definitely like within top three. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Yeah, my... I think um, I actually really like... Uh, what's it called? Um, Just Because. As yeah. Well, like we talked I also about really the like other that day. show. Mm-hmm. Drew won't watch Obviously very them. different genres. No, because he hates us. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously very, very different genres from each other, but yeah, also very similar. One other thing that's kind of been that it's in the later episodes, they do change some of the dialogue a little bit. And he, he talks about at one point he gets her the ring gift because, uh, she's such a quiet person in the anime. They kind of, they keep saying like, you never tell me when you're not feeling well. And he's always like, you're, you never tell me when you're tired or when you're exhausted and things like that. And so when he says like, this is good for something or it'll be good for you to get a, a, um, a, what's it called? Uh, a familiar for some, especially for someone as quiet as you. And then she says, oh, sorry. You know, in the anime, he says something like, oh, especially for someone who never, um, says how they're feeling or something like that. And then she's like, sorry. And so it's a little different, but it kind of still gets the message across. Yeah, it's probably just but, whatever translator is doing mm-hmm. the stuff. Yeah, but anything else you want to add to the uh, episode, yo? Uh, not really. I think kind of covered what I thought about that last arc. Yeah, so and we've got the new one coming up, and uh, it looks like it's going to be an exciting one. So With good we'll have doggos. some cool updates uh, next time yep good doggos (laughs) but um for now that's what we've got that's the cat arc and uh it's been cool everybody thanks for listening bye